So where we got to last time was the slash zip pocket. So we'd sewn the front of the pocket, sewn around the rectangle, pushed it through and had just placed our zip behind. So what I've done here with the zip foot is sew all the way around that rectangle to hold that in place. So what you wanted to do is this, this bit here that I've just folded up and pinned is to keep, was to keep that away from where you were sewing. So if it helps to roll it up whilst you sew the zip on so you don't catch that, do do that as well. Then what we are doing is pinning the bottom part of the pocket, folding it up to match the raw edges. And we're just gonna sew round the three edges now of the pocket, no gap needed. And then you just get into the pocket from the, the front there where the zip is. So the other thing to remember is to keep out of your way the actual bag part, the main bag part. So you're just sewing the three sides of the bag, not through to the other side. So I'll just sew around there now. And then you'd repeat that the same for if you've done a zip slash pocket like this in the lining as well. So I've sewn around those three sides and kept the rest of the main part of the bag out the way. So now when I flip it over to the front, when I unzip my pocket, I'll be able to put things in there without them falling out. So that's your slash zip pocket completed there. And the next thing to do is sew the darts in our base of our bag. So of all the two lining pieces and the two outer pieces. So if you fold right sides together like this, you can pop a pin in and we're just going to sew with half a centimetre score on here to show you with Taylor's chalk off to the, the point there as well. So we can sew those on all of the pieces. So Right up there at that point. Take that out there. And then it just gives you a bag depth there. So I'll repeat that for the other side here, and then the other lining piece and the two outers. And then you can put that to the side, and that will be all of your darts done. So we've got here now two dots in the bottom of this lining piece, two in the bottom of the other lining piece, both for my outer pieces there, and the other piece with the pocket on there. So the dots are in there at the bottom. So that's all those done. So we've sewn our pocket today and added the darts. The next thing to do will be to add a magnetic snap at the top. So I've put in one of them there, but I'll go through adding how to just add those in. So that's that one done there on one side. And I'm just going to go through adding the other one now on the other side. So I've found the center of my main bag piece, which is 18, put a dot. And then if you measure four to five centimeters down from the top there and do another dot, and then you get your plate there for your magnetic snap, place it over that dot that you've marked the halfway and four or five centimeters down from the top, mark through those two rectangles there, either side, and then we are going to, with an unpicker, just make a small incision through those gaps. From the front of your lining, the right side of your lining, push those prongs through, place your plate on the back and push those out. And then what we've got there is both sides of our magnetic snap on our bag. So that can be put to the side as well. The other thing to think about is before we do the piping is our straps. So I've just got two meters of webbing and I cut off 10 centimeter length pieces, two 10 centimeter length pieces of my webbing 
folded it round my rectangular ring or your D ring or your O ring, folded that round and then just close to the edge have closed that shut. So those can then be put to the side for when we sew the bag together. And then what you've got is the rest of your strap of what's left about um, one meter 80 of my webbing there. So that's gonna be the same if you also make fabric straps. So as we said, you'd be cutting on the cutting list, I think I said 15 centimeters wide by that length of, of two meters of fabric. And then to make the straps, if you're not using the webbing, fold in half to the wrong side, fold into that center crease and fold over again. And then you'll just sew down both those sides and that will be your strap. And again, once you've done that, you can cut off two centimeter strips to create these loops for the parts of the bag there that will be attached to the long piece once we've sewn all the bags together. So the bag loops there. So that's where we're up to now. Once all those bits are doing, we're just gonna move on to our um, piping and then sewing the bag together and it'll be completed. Before the piping, um, or in whatever order that you would like, seeing as the lining doesn't have any piping in the seam, you can sew the lining pieces right sides together and leave a 12 centimetre gap in the bottom. So um, I'm using a centimetre seam allowance. So... So that's our lining sewn together with a centimetre seam allowance and a gap there in the bottom of 12 centimetres and put to the side. So now to look at piping on the trail. So like I said, you can have sewn your lining pieces right sides together once the darts are in and just leave the gap at the bottom. We can't sew the outer together yet because we need to add the piping cord. So what you're going to do is you've either bought pre-made piping cord or um, with the bias tape, or you've got some cord and you've got your bias binding. So you're opening out your piping cord, um, sorry, your bias binding or your um, piece of fabric, place your piping cord right in the middle and fold it over. And what you're going to do to start with is just tack. You can either do it on the machine or by hand, just sort of tack um, a little bit away from where the piping cord is because when we attach it to the bag, we're gonna get even closer to that. So number one step is just to attach it to your binding, um, your cord into your binding. So that's step one. Step two, once you've made all your piping cord like that, you're going to put it on one of your outer pieces right side up and then the raw edge of your piping cord and the raw edge of your um, main panel piece right sides together, pin that in place and then we're going to stitch a line again to get the piping um, cord attached to your main piece so you'll pin all the way around that as I've done here and then what I'm going to do with my zipper foot is get in a little bit closer so sort of about half a centimeter from the edge so this doesn't have to be writing close to the cord yet that will be the last stage so we're just making sure that it's attached to one of your main panel pieces and once it's attached to there 
is then the third time that we sew the piping cord and actually join your outer bag together. That's when we then put it right sides together so your piping cord will be sandwiched between and we come in now as close as we can to the piping cord. So with your zipper foot or adjustable zipper foot or piping foot, you're going to be sewing as far in as you can up to the piping cord so that when we turn this outer um, out the right way round, it's just a really snug fit for that piping cord. So that's your three steps to sew the piping cord on. Once you've sewn all the way around the outer, we don't need to leave a gap like the lining. We're going to turn out that the right way round and attach the strap tabs to the main bag, but that will be in the next video.